Hello and welcome to this video where I will show you how you put a text above your character inside Roblox or inside Roblox Studio. So this little demonstration is actually just a mini game I just created with some find the things that you have to collect. So as you can see if we just run over this small phone it got collected but the most important thing is that you can see that the counter in the text above our player was actually counting. So that could be just one purpose of what you want to use the text for. So let's just first of all find out how we put a text above our character. And after that we could just go and add a feature where we run into a block for example and then it will count one up just so you can see that you can actually interact with the text. So let's just open a new base plate project so we can start from scratch. So when we open Roblox Studio, we just want to hit the base plate. The first thing I want to do is actually just go and add a block to our project so that we can just go and display the text above this block. So over in our Explorer, we now have this part and it's okay. It doesn't matter what it's called. Let's hit the plus icon. And what we want to find is a billboard GUI. So click on that and inside the billboard GUI, we want to add a text label. So now, as you can see, we actually already have a text block or text label inside this part now. So to move it up a bit, we have to hit the billboard GUI and over in our properties here, we can go and set the studs offset here. Let's go and set the middle one to 2.5. So now we can actually go and see the whole label here. And the next thing we actually want to go and adjust is the size because right now you can see it's a fixed size. So 200 pixels wide and 50 pixels high but when you can as you can see here if we zoom out you can see that the label will just go and follow these dimensions so no matter where we are on the screen it will always be the same size and we really don't want that because if you have like 20 players running around and you have these big huge labels it will just go and fill the whole screen so a decent size that i found out is actually just to go and remove this 200 and then set it 4 over here and we will also set this to 1 and set this to 0. So now you can see if we zoom out you can see that it will just stay the, the same size and it will not scale up with what we have set it to. The next problem is of course the label in here. You can see the text. If we zoom out you can see it will go and disappear and if we zoom in you can see it just still is a fixed size and we don't want that so what we want to do is go to the text label here and then again we want to go and set the size but this time we want to set it to one so that it will just fill out with its parent so it, it is just the billboard size that it will fit into and again set one over here also and put this to zero so now you can see it will just go and fit the box but then again, you can see the text is uh, not scaling properly as we want it. If we zoom out, you cannot read it anymore. So what we want to do here is also in our text label in the properties, we want to scroll down and then we want to click on this text scaled. We actually also want to go and remove the white background. So that is up here that we can just go and set the background transparency to one. And another thing I want to add is actually just uh, some small or a little stroke to the text. So let's go and remove this uh, text stroke transparency and let's set the stroke to a white color. So now it's a little bit easier to read this text. And just for a design aspect, I just want to go and change the font to Gotham here and set it to bold. And if you think this white stroke is a little bit too overwhelming, you can go and just adjust this one, the transparency of it. So we could go and set it to 0.5 instead. And then it actually look pretty good. So now let's go and add this to our character. So first of all, let's go and take this billboard GUI and copy it, hit control C and go down to our server storage and hit control shift V to put it inside our server storage. So it's pretty much just to have a place where we can go and clone this billboard GUI from and put it on our character. So now let's go into our server script service and go and add a new script. And I do actually just want to go and delete the part that we created. 
so it's not on the game anymore. And then the first thing we want to do in here is to get our billboard GUI. So we will have to say that we want to inside our game, we want to get a service, which is the server storage, which is where we put the billboard GUI. And then we want to go and wait for the child billboard GUI, which is basically just this billboard GUI we created over here. And it will also have the text underneath it. So the next thing we want to do is to say that when we in our game, we have some players and when the player is added to the game, connect, so it's actually just execute. Then we will put this anonymous function inside where we then get the player. So the player is just the object or the player that has just joined the game. Then we can go and take our player and say when the character is added. So when we actually, when our character is added in the game and we can see the character, then go and execute this function. And because inside this function, we actually get the character of our player. So what we can do now is to go and take our billboard GUI and make a clone of it. And it's important that we make a clone because else you will just go and take this directly, but we just want a copy of it. So you have to say clone. Then we can go and save it inside a local variable that we call cloned GUI. Then we can go and manipulate the text label that we have inside our billboard GUI. So we do have this cloned GUI now, which is just this one. And underneath that, we have our text label. You could call it something else. I just call it text label for now. So I can reference it here as the text label. And now, as you can see the text label here, we have all the properties over here on the text label. And we have something called text, which is actually just the text that we want to have it to display. So as default here, when we just go and make a new clone of it, it would just say label as it says right here. But we want to go and say dot text and just change it to counter zero. So the final thing we have to do is to define our cloned billboard here, our billboard GUI clone that we just cloned. Where do we want to have it? So to do that, you want to set the parent of this cloned GUI. And in this case, I want to set the head on our character. So we go and say in our game and inside our workspace, we want to wait for the child, actually our player. And of course, from our player, we can go and get our player's name. So you can put that in and wait for the child called what we are called because our players are going to be added to the workspace when we are in the game. And then we want to go and take the head of our player so we can put it just above the head of our player. So let's go and run this and test if it's working. And if it's not, we want to go and fix it, but it did work. So we have our counter here, which is zero. And when you zoom out, you can see it will just stay above the head and look pretty good. And just for some education purpose here, I want to show you inside our workspace. You can see I have the name of my character here, Setbit Gaming. And when you open that, you can see that we have all the body parts here. So we have the head here. You can see it will be marked here as the head. You also have left foot and so on. You have the whole body here. So when we now expand the head, you can go and see that we have our billboard GUI that we just put on top of his head. And the reason that it is on top of his head is of course, because we set this dot offset over, over here. You could go and play around with it, put it to five, then you can see it will just go more above his head. So now let's try to add a part to the game where when we run into it, it will just count up by one. So let's go and create a new part here. Just put a block and it could actually just be this block. So when we run into it, it should be count up by one. So underneath the part here, we want to go and create a new script. And first of all, we want to take the part itself. So just say script.parent. Then we want to go and say every time the part is touched, then go and execute this function here. So it's just again an anonymous function with no name. And the hit parameter is just what did hit the part. So to first make a check that it was actually our character or just a character with a humanoid inside, then we will go and say if the hit parent, so the parent of what uh, hit it. So this hits parent, uh, you, can, you can see it as if the hit touched the part first, then this would be the hit. 
And then we want to go and take the parent because then inside the parent, we want to go and find the first child that is called humanoid. And if that exists, then we see this as it is a character that actually hit the part here. So to actually keep track of the counter, we do have to go back to the other script. And what I would like to do is just to go and create a new local variable. And then we say counter and set it to zero. So every time we join the game, it will just start at zero. And then the next thing we want to do is to go and create a counter on the player. So we make a new instance of an int value. And I will show you in just a moment what this is going to do. But we want to save this int value inside our player counter. And then we want to put a name to it. So we say that it's called counter. And finally, we could also go and put the value in here. So we could actually just go and say zero. And we actually don't need this. So just go and delete that one. And then say value here. And then the final thing we have to do is to take this player counter and put the parents to the player. So let me just show you what we have done. If we hit play, then uh, this time actually under our players here, we can go inside our player. And now you can see we have actually added an int value here, a counter under our player. And as you can see now, the value is set to zero. So just back to the script, we should be able now to actually just go and take this player counter dot value and put it inside here instead so we say dot dot to concatenate and put the variable here and let's try to run it again so that we can see it still says counter zero and it still say counter zero so now we have something to keep the value in so that we can go and get it in the other script here so now inside our script here where we hit the part uh, we get what actually hit the part here and then we can go and say that this hits parent is our character. And to get the player, we can go and say game. And inside our players, we can actually go and get the player from a character, which we just have here. So we can go and put that in. And then we actually get the player. So now we can actually just go and get the player just by saying, uh, let's just say print first and then say player dot count. And it's of course called counter. So let's try to test this and let's try to run into our part here. And then we can see down here, it actually print counter. And that's of course, we don't say that we want the value. So let's just go back and say that we want the value instead. So inside our script, we want to say dot value and let's test it again and run into the part again. And now you can see it actually says zero because we don't count it in the code yet. So we should be able to just go and take this player counter dot value and actually just say plus equal and then one because we would put one to it. And then the final thing that we need is to take our character and go into the head of our character because it's here we have our billboard GUI where we have our text label inside. And then we can go and just say whatever we want the text to be. So in this case, we say that it should be counter just as before. And then we can go and concatenate with two dots. And then we want to concatenate it with the value that we have on our player inside the player's counter that we just created. And we want to take the value. So if we just go and test this. We can now see that it will count up. And of course, the reason it's counting so fast is because we have not set any debouncing on it. So let's just go and do that. And then I also think it's okay for now. So I have not integrated it yet, but this is the code to debounce. So what it basically does is that it's checking if the script is already running. So in the beginning, it's of course not running. Then we say, if it's not running, then we go and set is running to true. And then right here, we want to go and execute the code. And then we will wait, wait five seconds till we can do it again. So in this case, let's just go and put it to two seconds. So it's not five, five is pretty much maybe. So basically where we want to put this is inside our touched function. So let's just go and copy this and put it inside here. And then we want to go and take all the code we have here and put it inside the to do part. So now it should only be able to run this 
when we have waited for two seconds. So let's just test it at last time and let's run into the part. Okay, so it's still counting up a lot. Okay, so what I did to fix it was just to take this is running false. It was in here before. Just put it outside, then it should work. So let's go and test it again. And then we can see now it's working. So it will only count up one every two seconds. So that was actually it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something about to put a text above things. It's not only for a character, you can also do it for parts. So you could also do it the other way around, have a counter above the part and let it count up every time a character have hit the part. And of course you could also just put a name or whatever you want to have up here. It doesn't have to be dynamic like this. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's just go and have a nice day. Bye.